I'm going to go ahead and call to order this uh, regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, July 7th of 2020. First up on the agenda, we have messages from the board. Do we have any messages from the board this evening? No. Beth, any messages from you? Beth is unmuted. Beth is on mute. I'm not sure if she is able to unmute herself. I will go ahead and there we go, Beth. Uh, yeah. Beth, did I just get you unmuted? Hello? Hi. Oh, yep, here we go, Beth. There you are. Yeah, okay. I just would like to thank all to everyone who's out working every day in this unrelenting heat. Uh, thank you. Be safe and drink lots of fluids. Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Um, mm -hmm. I I do have uh, some comments I wanted to make. Um, you know, I uh, have been very disturbed and um, truly sickened by the recent acts of racist violence within our city and our county and our nation. Um, my thoughts are with those who have been injured, both physically and psychologically, as well as our black and brown residents who are confronting daily trials and challenges perpetuated by systemic racism. Uh, while, you know, the Board of Public Works uh, may not often review items that seem connected to issues of racial equity, uh, as a member of this body, I've been reflecting on the decisions we make and the way that we can interrupt systemic racism. And I encourage my fellow appointed and elected officials to join me to do all in our power to take action and to correct decisions and policies that are an affront to racial equity and justice. And I appreciate everyone who participates in these meetings and brings forward important comments on the, the issues that you consider and encourage that continued participation here and uh, in meetings um, publicly in other aspects of the city and the county. So thank you. Thanks, Kyla. Next up, we have uh, petitions and remonstrances. Uh, first, if we have any public comment that is not related to something on the agenda this evening, uh, now would be an opportunity to make that comment. So if we have any public comment, please let us know. I do not see anything in the chat. I don't see anyone raising any hands to uh, offer any comment. So for anyone that's visible, I don't see any hands up. I haven't seen any of the hand up emoji come up through the chat and I don't see anything on the chat, Kyla. Okay, uh, we will move on to the first item, uh, appeal notice of violation number 45770, and that is at 420 North Roosevelt. So would that be Chris Wheeler? We will unmute Chris. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chris Wheeler with the City of Bloomington Legal Department. Um, I ordinarily ask the board if the city might defer to the appellant uh, to state his appeal and reserve an opportunity to give a response. So if Mr. Weidenauer, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly, is present, I would defer to him to state his appeal. Great. I will find Eric on the chat and or on the uh, list and unmute him. Uh, I saw an Eric in here. There it is. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Hello. Yes. Hi, Eric. How are you? Good. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, so, as I stated on um, on, on on my letter about this, um, so uh, twice this year, my lawn was uh, slightly too long, like over the eight inches, and we got like an, a reminder about it. And uh, the last one, we were asked to pay fifty dollars. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the reason for it being too long was not uh, negligence on our part. Um, actually, like, 
um, last year bought this house here and are both like owners and live here, which is for this neighborhood uh, fairly uncommon. It's mostly like students and men at our places. But what we've been doing is in the in our front yard, I've been trying to like um, improve the lawn quality. So I was doing some overseeding with the package with the seed stated that uh, the lawn shouldn't be mowed for uh, a few weeks while the new seeds are out there and growing, which is why the lawn uh, grew taller than the eight inches. Thank you. We may have to unmute uh, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, I don't think he was. All right, there we go. There we go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so uh, the city would like to simply rely upon Mr. Whitenauer's own admissions that he did in fact have his uh, lawn uh, growing in excess of the eight inches that is permitted by Bloomington Municipal Code um, and ask that the appeal be denied um, and the ticket be upheld. Uh, Mr. Lyford, as the neighborhood compliance officer, um, corroborates uh, the city's uh, notice of violation having been issued through his own personal observation. Um, and while um, I can respect somebody trying to allow their grass to come in uh, through a manufacturer's instructions on the seeds, um, I still think that the city ought to enforce the ticket as issued uh, and find that it was issued appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from... Um, is there any... Sorry, yes, go ahead, sir. Um, is there any procedure I could go through, like noticing the city that I um, am growing new lawn, or is this kind of uh, like completely non-negotiable? It's just like below eight inches, no matter what. Like I, yeah. I, I uh, interpret it as, as like the spirit of this is to keep neighborhoods tidy and, and looking good, which is exactly what we were trying to do. Well, I, that's going to be a decision for the board to make. I'm, I've been unmuted, uh, like maybe I should say something. Uh, I, I certainly can appreciate the effort, um, and I suppose that if there was cooperation with the city where there was some notification, it might help the uh, housing and neighborhood development enforcement officers to know what's going on versus uh, just seeing the grasses uh, in excess of the uh, permissible height. Uh, but I would certainly defer to the board for that sort of a, of a discussion on, on whether they find that appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so questions from the board um, on this item. Were there warnings on uh, this property or was it just a one notice of violation? I'm guessing I probably, should I unmute someone, okay. <laughs> Joe, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, hang on. I can't do that actually. All right, Joe's unmuted and Chris, I'm gonna leave you unmuted. It Thank you. Like so it's actually Kenneth Lyford who oh. was the uh, <laughs> officer. So we need to find find his unmute button. There we go, Kenny. Kenny's iPad. There we go. Yes, I uh, I issued a warning on May fifth of this year for excessive growth, and then uh, on six twenty two the yard was tall again, and that's when I issued the citation with a fine. I did not include pictures from the five five. Uh, this year warning, but there are pictures from the 622 citation. Yeah, so I think my thought process would be if I got a warning, I might have contacted the city. So um, Eric, was was there, a, did you attempt to reach out and let them know at that point or um, when you received that warning? And uh, I think I need to unmute him. I got it. Okay. So we, um, I, I, I mowed the lawn after I got the first uh, warning um, immediately. Um, and 
sort like uh, took care uh, of it that way. Um, okay. And then the second time, I mean, I think it was like around the like it, it, it was a bit over the permitted height, as I stated. But um, um, I yeah, I assumed it it would be fine. And um, <clears throat> yeah, was about to 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 mow the lawn and had like the new seeds out and growing and so on and. Uh, I guess they were uh, a bit too high again, but I, I did I did not reach out after the first citation. No. Other questions from the board on this item? Uh, is Beth unmuted or does she have the ability to say? She should be. Beth, do you have any questions? Thanks. Yeah, I, yeah. well, I just have been muted and I just have wondered how to get into the meeting. So if you could just keep me unmuted, please, because it just keeps saying I can't unmute myself. Um, so, no, I just, um, I just appreciate the fact that, that uh, you cannot mow after you have seeded in this, particularly in this weather with no rain. It would just, um, destroy what they're trying to do. So I'm, um, I understand what he's saying. Any other questions or um, comments? I, one procedural question, uh, I'm, I just, I'm not totally confident on, um, for, uh, for the hand staff is, um, is it fairly typical that a residents receives one warning in a season, like in a mowing season, and then after that they would receive uh, the you know progressively escalating uh, notices of violation with fine um, because of just the nature of the way we we handle warnings within the city? Is that pretty typical? Yes. Okay. That's um, and. I believe I've been told there's really nowhere in the code that says we even have to issue a warning. So we, we really just do that to let people know, hey, it's a little tall and you know it's time to take care of it. And then if we go back, then it, and it's uh, fine after that. Okay, yeah, and I, I definitely, I mean, from my perspective, appreciate the warning. I think that um, it, you know, that we probably all had those experiences where we, uh, got a little bit behind or, or forgot about something we needed to um, catch up on. So I think warnings are a good way to um, allow people that opportunity. And if someone will, will call into the hand office and speak with one of us and let us know they've got something going on, you know, then we're more than willing to work with them on it. It's, you know, but obviously I had no idea that that's what the, he had done. All right. Other, any other questions from the board? <coughs> All right, is there a motion from the board? I move that we waive the ticket 45770 for the fine $50. Yep, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, uh, sorry, my screen's all out of whack. Um, next up is appeal notice of violation number 45774 at 910 South Palmer. All right, so this is going to be Kenneth King. Kenneth King and Chris, will you, I'll keep you unmuted as well. And I'll unmute Mr. King. There we go. Should be unmuted, Mr. King. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wheeler, uh, are we going to just defer to Mr. King, or would you like to say uh, anything? Please, I, I would be happy to defer for Mr. King to state his appeal. Great. Okay. Um, you have the pictures of my yard before and after mowing. Uh, and you also have pictures of numerous other yards in the near vicinity of mine. Uh, obviously, I don't feel that a yard in the state my yard is in uh, should have been issued an excessive growth uh, citation at any time, but 
you know, I am trying to understand, we have all of this serious stuff going on in our country at this time. Uh, it should be obvious that a lot of things are out of kilter for many people. And I would think that you might apply your ordinance a little more laxly, whatever the uh, standards are at this particular time. Uh, and if a citation is issued, uh, even a warning citation, I think there should be some sort of comment on it about uh, what exactly the problem is. Uh, in my case, I called into the office. Uh, I spoke to one person for a while and I, they transferred me to the phone of the inspector. I left a voicemail. I was, was never called back. Uh, it's possible if we had spoken, I might have determined exactly what the problem uh, was. And the other thing is, uh, I'm sorry, I think immediate compliance is uh, a little bit much to expect for every single situation, uh, but you have that as a standard item in your form. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm through with that. Uh, you have questions? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wheeler, do you want to um, give us the report? Uh, well, yeah, thank you. So uh, once again, it's a this is a an overgrowth situation, um, and in the appellant's uh, appeal that he filed with the Board of Public Works, he also, like the past the previous case, uh, admitted that his lawn had been allowed to become overgrown. In this case, it was after he had been away for a time, um, and uh, so with regards to Bloomington Municipal Code, when uh, the property is allowed to be overgrown in the height of at least eight inches or more. Uh, beyond, sorry, beyond the height of eight, eight inches, uh, then that is a violation of uh, Bloomington Municipal Code. Um, I believe uh, neighborhood compliance officer D. Wills was present on the property uh, or at the side of the property and observed the overgrowth and issued the tickets appropriately. They were properly notified to the, uh, or delivered and noticed to uh, not only the uh, renter, uh, who is Mr. King, but also to uh, the landlord uh, Constance Fleetwood. So we uh, um, followed the notice of violation delivery and notice requirements. Uh, I would ask uh, that the board approve the uh, ticket as issued and deny the appeal. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. King, did you want to say something? Yes, yes. I did not admit that my, uh, my, uh, my grass was overgrown. I, I deny that it is overgrown. I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I put in the background of the circumstances to show that I have been uh, traveling back and forth between two places for uh, 11 years. I've never had a notice during all that time. My grass is kind of varies in the length uh, uh, for various reasons. Uh, I as soon as I got the notice, uh, I was, well, I was angry about it. Uh, you can, you look at those other pictures and tell me that uh, the majority of them don't have more uh, vegetative growth than uh, what was on this yard. Uh, I'm now presented with a decision as to whether I'm gonna travel back and forth more frequently at a time I would like to restrict my travel or just go ahead and, and move out of the house I've been occupying for years, which is where I'm leaning. Uh, my landlady just received the copies of the stuff I sent in to you folks uh, today. She's left me a voicemail. I didn't want to talk with her about it before this hearing, but uh, she said she can't even believe that this is happening. Uh, and and uh, I think she's going to have a legitimate uh, complaint if I move out of the, of the house, which is where I'm leaning right at this point. Uh, but my, my main thing is, really, guys, uh, would you not consider being a little more lax this year than above uh, all other years? I, I just, what is the public health hazard here? Uh, uh, if I may respond, uh, with the uh, height of grass being in excess of eight inches, there is no public health concern. It's not like we're talking about any noxious uh, weeds, uh, which are also controlled by this stat, uh, this uh, code section. Um, 
And so with regards to a public health concern, there isn't one. This is simply a code that expects properties to be maintained and to keep the grass at a level that is below eight inches. Um, and uh, with regards to the photographs that were taken, I think you can see from Officer D. Will's uh, photographs that were presented to the board that the property did in fact have grass that was ex uh, exceeding the eight inch mark. Okay, can I see a copy of the photographs? They should so be. Could I the... see at some point? I've never received anything from the officer whatsoever. <clears throat> It should be in the packet. I don't. I don't know if the board has those. I'm looking right now. And this is Adam Wason here, Public Works Director for the City of Bloomington, uh, Mr. King. Um, what I'd like to say as well is, um, you know, I can appreciate your point of, um, you know, should we be uh, being a little more lax right now with these sorts of things. Um, I'm also in a position here with our uh, staff with the hand department, the housing neighborhood development department and others is, you know, um, they, they still have a job to do. They're, they're still out doing um, work on rental inspections on uh, making sure yards that are, I think our next uh, item on the agenda is going to be for uh, a lot of trash in the yard that needed to be cleaned up and things like that. Um, and as a fellow city employee, I do want to be very respectful of, you know, that they still have city code to enforce. City code is uh, approved by the city council, um, but I also understand we're in pretty extraordinary circumstances. Um, and the board has uh, upheld a few of these appeals recently, but, you know, the one prior to this. And, and I, I, my, my message is not only to you, Mr. King, that, you know, I, I can recognize that. Um, we're, we're in a very trying times with a lot of different things. And um, so I, I appreciate your comments there. Uh, I hope you can appreciate, um, you know, the, that the staff also has a very tough job in a lot of ways to, you know, for, for yards that are completely unruly, for people that make no effort to maintain. Um, and, and so there does need to be a balance there. And we need to be careful with setting precedent with, you know, allowing one to be uh, denied or one to be upheld and things like that. But um, I, I do want you to know, I do respect your opinion there. I do respect uh, your point that was being made. Um, I don't see the pictures in the packet with the ruler. Usually they have a picture with the ruler. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. they haven't been included with the packet this time around. They, they're in the and J that, drive. I, I see photographs I in the J drive. Do we have is it, is it any ahead. distinction because it was a warning as opposed to a um, fine that there may have been something about the, the um, photos that were attached to it? You know, that's that's possible. So, yeah, I, I think that generally the um, and, and maybe somebody from hand can chime in, but it seems to me that the 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 procedure that's followed with hand is that they don't take pictures for warnings. Uh, but they will and do take pictures for an actual uh, um, fine that's assessed. <clears throat> and I, I think that, I don't know, Joe, I see you've unmuted. That, that is typically true. Sometimes we'll have a picture of a warning as well, but often not. There's no fine involved. We don't, it is just a warning and we don't always take a picture of that, no. Okay. But, uh, I, have a, I have uh, photos. Yeah, it sounds like there's pictures in the J drive. There, are, there are some pictures. They just don't have yeah. the typical picture I, where you show the tape measure yeah. above eight inches. I, yes. Okay. Yeah, there isn't one. And there's a, a lawnmower yeah. in the front yard. Yeah. That, those. Yeah. The so, picture yeah. of him, his mowing. Yep. One picture <clears> of <throat> the overgrowth. Yeah. So the warning was issued, and. Uh, uh, Mr. King then mowed and um, well King Mr. King would have mowed he was coming back from his trip uh, Mr. King always mows his yard uh, Mr. King's concern now after listening to you folks today is that at some point I'm going to be going a little longer than usual because of weather or whatever and uh, I'm going to come back and you want to have a fine on there because you issued one morning only and, and that's that so uh, probably I'm going to uh, going to move out of the house. Uh, well, Mr. Uh, King, you know, we do, you know, and I appreciate that you're, you're the, the, I, I can appreciate your frustration here. I can appreciate, um, you know, the, the, the circumstances we're in as a, 
um, <clears throat> with, with travel and COVID and everything. I, I, I want you to recognize, I fully appreciate that. Uh, what, I, <clears throat> what I do also want to recognize is that this code is approved by the city council to be enforced by the Housing and Neighborhood Development uh, Department. And, and that's what they've done. Um, whether or not it should be more lax at this time, I think that needs to be a larger discussion that we certainly need to have. Um, but I, I do want our staff to recognize that we respect that, that they do have a job to do based on enforcing city code as they're directed you know, through the process. Is a, you know, I think it'd be very fortunate if you moved over uh, this issue of, of lawn mowing, but you know, um, I'll, I'll leave that to be your prerogative. But what, we do want to be respectful and understanding, and and this is a warning. Um, and if if you did have a time when you were going to be out of town for an extended period, and you knew your gra you know, grass was going to get really long, um, I'm sure if you left the inspector just a quick voicemail like you've done before to say, hey, I'm going to be out of town for a few weeks. I just wanted to let you know. I'm sure they would be accommodating. We try to be accommodating. We try to be reasonable. I know um, that uh, that you might disagree with that right now, but that that is always our intent. I promise. Okay. Are you? It is your opinion, looking at the pictures that I provided, that that grass constitutes excessive growth. <clears throat> if it was right. above eight, if it was above eight inches, which I cannot see, then yes, according to city code, it would be. I, I well, there are some seed stalks from the grass that are above eight inches. Uh, <laughs> yep, I the, recognize. The dust clover. I ask the question: Is this eight inches average, or is it anything in the property? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. I, I I recognize that. Yep. So um, I I uh, do want to thank you, Mr. King, for your comments and thank Hand for the work that um, they've done in this regard. I. Um, you know, there have been a lot of things affected by this pandemic. Obviously, us having this meeting in this format is one of those things. Um, but, uh, you know, there is um, not a direct uh, impact on lawn mowing or mowing services um, in accordance to, you know, some of the, um, the restrictions and, and uh, directives that have come from the state um, or from our local um, officials. So uh, HAND is still operating in that way. I also would point out just for residents in general, not necessarily specific to this case, but residents in general, that many more of us are actually um, at our homes um, and residing in our neighborhoods for our full work day plus all of the rest of our time. And so there might also be more instances where um, neighbors are impacted negatively by overgrown lawns, um, that there are concerns that arise more frequently. So it, it is something to consider that this is a, a definite, you know, strange time and that we may, uh, you know, experience some of these um, challenges in different ways. Uh, but I, I think that um, in, in this case, it is, it is safe to assume that if um, there's foliage in the yard that is over eight inches, that there could be either a warning or a um, citation issued. But as um, Adam mentioned, you know, communicating with the hand staff uh, would go a long way in ensuring that they understand what um, can be expected uh, in that space. If there uh, are any other questions from board at this time? No, I don't have any questions. All right, is there a um, motion on this item from the board? How do you want this stated? You'd want just that we acknowledge the, um, the acceptance of the letter that we received the, the appeal and, and uphold the warning. Yeah, at this time, uh, Beth, we're uh, making a decision to either um, uphold the um, the notice or overturn the notice. Although it looks like Chris okay, is trying so. to unmute. Maybe I should unmute him just a second. <clears throat> okay, I got you. Okay. Thank you. I, th I think, you know, to keep it simple, you're either going to approve the appeal or deny the appeal. I see. Do we have a motion from the board on approving or denying the appeal on this item? Uh, 
I move that we approve the appeal. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And so that was to approve the appeal. It yes. that was, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Mr. King, your appeal was approved. Um, and uh, we'll from the file. And I do want to say, you know, this is a good, you know, a couple meetings now in a row where we've had some of these. I think it is, you know, a good conversation to have with the hand staff, with Doris, with her team and the administration on how we want to handle these. Uh, again, I want the hand staff to know utmost respect for what they do um, <clears throat> and, and, and know that it is trying times, but we'll um, have to try to further that conversation internally. Uh, back to you, Kyla. All right. Uh, next up, we have um, appeal notice of violation for 45813 at 221 East 10th Street. Okay. And I believe this is Lindsey Brown uh, is the appellant. I've unmuted Lindsey. Uh, Lindsey did mention she's got another meeting coming up, but um, Mr. Wheeler, would you like us just to um, uh, go to Ms. King? Or Ms. Brown? Sorry. <laughs> Yes. All right. Okay. Go, go ahead. Yeah. I go ahead? Yes. Okay. Uh, first off, I just want to say I love Hand, Kenny, like Mike, Joe. I've met you all in person. Y'all are amazing. Um, so this isn't really anything with that. Um, the house 221 East 10th Street is a rental house. Um, I'm a landlord. I run Chickering Rentals downtown and my tenants have been out of the house since uh, spring break due to COVID. Um, and the material that's, that was cited on the ground kind of looks more like probably like a transient person left it there or, or who knows. And I was unfortunately um, out on a vacation when the warning came through. So my assistant just kind of put it over to the side. And by the time I came back, the citation was there. Um, I just, I haven't even given it to my tenants yet, um, which I'll pass it along to them if it does become a thing, but I felt kind of bad to like charge them when they're not really there. So I was going to see if there was any way to revert back to the warning or to um, dismiss the appeal. And then I'll have my maintenance guys clean up the stuff on the street. I don't have any problem cleaning it up. All right. All right. Uh, well, let's go ahead and hear uh, Mr. Wheeler's report. Yep, I'm going to unmute, I'm gonna unmute hand and Chris is unmuted. Thank you very much. Uh, again, Chris Wheeler with City Legal. And um, so uh, we can appreciate uh, the problems that you have uh, as owners of property when other people might be uh, less than courteous and throwing garbage on your property. But the code is very specifically written to state that not only are you not to throw garbage on your own property and leave it there, uh, but you're also not to suffer or permit any garbage to be placed on your property by others. Um, there's no uh, discussion necessarily about the nature of the, the trash as to what it might be. Um, it's just, it's trash, it's garbage. And if it's on the property, uh, you're responsible for making sure that you keep it picked up and keep your property maintained. Uh, in this case, on June 25th, the neighborhood compliance officer, who was Mike Arnold at the time, uh, out at the property, uh, noticed the trash on the ground and uh, issued a ticket um, uh, to Chickering uh, Rentals, which is the owner of the property. <clears throat> and for purposes of issuing a notice of violation, uh, the owner of the property with a possessory interest uh, is someone who can be held responsible for the violation. Um, we would ask in this case that uh, this appeal be denied and the ticket upheld. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any um, uh, report from hand staff at this time, or do you want to open it up to board questions? I've unmuted Joe and, and the team in hand. Um, I, I guess I'd ask the hand staff, you know, if we could, if Lindsay and her team could get out there right away and get this cleaned up, is, is that something acceptable to you folks? It looks to me like it's already been picked up. I don't know no. if maybe there's someone else, but it looks like it's already been removed. Got it. I'll defer to the board for any questions to the board. All right. I have no further questions. Uh, okay. 
Dana, do you have any questions? No, that was going to be my question is if it had been remedied yet, but it looks like it has. And so uh, it sounds like the situation is, is cleaned up at this point. Um, but I, you know, I think there probably is some concern, at least on my part, uh, about it um, remaining clean, that if, you know, for some reason it's been kind of identified as a place where, um, uh, where things can be dumped, um, that that might persist. And um, it does seem like this is something that needs to be planned for uh, by the, um, the property uh, owner um, if, if tenants are not are not there and not able to maintain it. Are there any other questions from the board? Comments? Comments, Adam? I don't see any. Yeah, that would be my question: is just to make sure that that is continually, you know, monitored. Uh, that property is monitored and maintained from here on out. Uh, and I'd like to I hear agree. from the owner if, if that would be something that they would do. All right, Lindsay's unmuted. Go. Hi, uh, yes, I, I will definitely, um, I just took over this company two years ago. So this is definitely a learning situation for me and I, I apologize. Um, normally what, if we got the warning, I would have sent my maintenance guy out to clean it immediately. Um, I, I do apologize for the delay in doing that. All right. Uh, do we have a motion from the board on this item? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the appeal. I think that's how we put it. <laughs> uphold. Um, do, uphold. Do you want uphold, uphold the, appeal. the appeal or or uphold the violation or uh, uphold the appeal? <laughs> uh, uphold the appeal. Do we have a second on that? Second. Am I on second? Thanks, okay, Dana. and I just want to, uh, I want to understand exactly what you're trying to do, Dana. You want to... Yep. I would like to... Um, uphold up, the citation. Allow... Or... No. Okay. I would actually not like to uphold the citation, and I would like to approve the appeal or allow the appeal gotcha. <laughs> to occur. <laughs> Chris, Appreciate tell me how to say it. <laughs> uh, the appeal. If, if you like the appeal and wish for them to be victorious, you uphold the appeal. If you don't <laughs> like the appeal and you wish for them to lose, then you deny the appeal. Yep, I okay. uphold the appeal, and that's my motion. <laughs> All right. Second. And we have a second for Beth. I promise to everyone in the public, we've been doing this for several years. <laughs> the wording, the wording of One the hour later, it doesn't seem like it. Right? <laughs> Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All, All right. right. Uh, moving on in the packet to Title VI enforcement. Uh, under Title VI enforcement, we have approved permission to abate property at 3811 North Kinzer Pike. So... All right, Mr. Wheeler, is this you again? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, and um, uh, this is a request by Norman Mosier and uh, Hand um, and Chris Wheeler uh, to uh, have this property at 2611 East Round Hill uh, be abated. Uh, whoa. Chris, I don't think, Mr. Wheeler, I don't think we're on Round Hill yet. I think we're on- We aren't, North, are we? Nope, North Kinzer. My apologies. Let me pull that one up. And I'll go ahead and unmute Joe and Mike so that they can uh, comment as well. Yeah, let's hear from the, uh, the officers while I'm looking. <laughs> Sorry. 
On Joe's song, one of the um, I work for Housing and Neighborhood Development as a neighborhood enforcement officer. Uh, we issued tickets four different times, May 20th, May 27th, June 12th, and June 24th, 2020, at this property uh, for overgrowth. Um, there are pictures in the packet, I believe. Um, and we have gotten no response from the owner, so we're asking for permission to enter the property and abate the violation. And to do so continuously as it seems to be an abandoned property. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, um, certainly with regards to these abatements, we have to show to the board that uh, we've followed the um, code as to giving the issuing the notice of violation and then giving notice of the intent to abate, letting the um, letting the uh, owner know that there's going to be a hearing with regards to the abatement. And those notices were all sent out um, and properly issued to Mr. Wagner as the owner of the property, who I don't believe has appeared. I have not seen a Mr. Wagner. Uh, um, unless Mr. Wagner, actually the number 3605473, is that a Mr. Wagner? No. And so uh, the staff does recommend that the property be abated uh, based upon the information provided. Thank you. And I guess here, here's a uh, uh, one that I would jump in on. Uh, to say that, you know, I, for Mr. King, if he's still on the meeting, you know, here's a perfect example of what, you know, what, what the neighborhood officers are trying to do. Uh, we've got an abandoned house. The grass is 30 inches long. You know, this is something where we do need to step in um, and, you know, would be a little different. Uh, so I just offer that comment. Yeah, it, it also as just an add on to that from a board perspective, from my own perspective, it's uh, it, 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 it requires the process of the citation to get to this um, point. So that's one of the reasons why there are the multiple steps um, to that process is to give the property owner or the tenant a chance to respond uh, during the, that citation process. And in this particular situation, we've had no response. There's a property that needs to be dealt with and now we are um, reviewing it for abatement, which means that the city will ensure that the the grass is um, cut to an appropriate uh, height um, and this one just clarification at this point uh, is a continuous abatement since we believe the property is abandoned so yes for, for the and I will add yeah I will add that the um, citations or the notice of violation go back to, into May so there's been no communication with this uh, Mr. Robert Wagner since then no nope. not at all nothing all right, thank you. Are there questions from the board at this time? Do we have a, um, just checking on any public comment at this time since we didn't hear anything uh, from the um, property owner, just checking in. I don't see, I'm looking at all the pictures right now. I don't see anyone that's looking to to comment and I don't see anything in the chat box for any public comment. Okay. Is there a motion from the board? I move to approve continuous abatement of the property at 3811 North Kinzer Pike. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Sorry. <laughs> Next, we have approved permission to abate property at 2611 East Round Hill Lane. All right, I've got okay. Mr. Hang on one second here. I've got Mr. Wheeler unmuted. I'll unmute the hand staff as well. And I believe Mr. Goal is here. Oh, gosh. Um, Mr. Goal, do we have you here? I am. Okay. Uh, are there, do you have anyone else representing you here today? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Wheeler, would you like us just to defer to Mr. Goal here first? Uh, or would you well, like to give your report? Uh, let's, let's give a staff report, please. Yep. 
Um, this now, uh, uh, I apologize for my earlier jumping the gun. Uh, this is Chris Wheeler with City Legal, and this is 2611 East Round Hill, uh, and a request for abatement by uh, Housing and Neighborhood Development uh, by Norman Mosier. Uh, notices of violation at this property have been issued um, throughout the spring, commencing April 30th, then May 7th, May 13th, May 20th, and also May 22nd. Uh, there are photographs provided to the board, I hope. Uh, mm -hmm. showing the uh, overgrowth. Uh, the GIS for the property information does so show Mr. Gull as the property owner. Uh, and we have provided to the board a, an order for abatement, uh, a proposed order. Uh, and in this situation, we're dealing with overgrowth under Bloomington Municipal Code 606050. Uh, and in this situation, we have the owner of the lot who has allowed his property to become overgrown uh, with weeds, um, and grass over eight inches. And in some instances, uh, there is overgrowth to the extent that it's uh, detrimental to public health. <clears throat> Mr. Mosier has been to the property each of these times and uh, personally observed uh, the overgrowth uh, and taken the pictures that are shown to the board. Uh, Mr. Gull is the one who received the notices of violation uh, as the owner of the property. Uh, the violations have not been corrected. Um, and the NOVs, those notices of violation were not appealed by Mr. Gull. Uh, these notices of violation were uh, left at Mr. Gull's property and uh, the notice of request to abate uh, was served on Mr. Gull at his property by certified mail. Uh, this abatement, if granted by uh, the board, should be continuous and it would date back uh, commencing uh, on the uh, 30th of April 2020 and wrap around for one 12 month period to uh, uh, April 30th of 2021. Um, we would ask that the board approve the request for the abatement. Uh, Mr. Mosier is here uh, to answer questions that the board has with regards to what he saw and uh, the tickets that he issued. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gold, do you have comments you'd like to make? I'm unmuting him now. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Gold's off mute. He's a lot. Mr. Gold, would you like to make comment? Yes, I would. Um, can we see the picture right across the road? I would like to present some pictures. Uh, you would have needed to coordinate that before the meeting, Mr. Goal, as we let you know last time. To, no, uh, through my computer, I don't need you to do anything. It's part of Zoom technical abilities. Got it. I see what you're... Um... And what's happening? We, we do have settings, security settings on Zoom, uh, likely on this particular call that only allows for um, the city staff hosting to share screen. So this is, that is correct. a situation where we do actually have to have it in advance, sort of similar to a real life meeting. Yes. You should warn that you put restrictions. We, Mr. Gold, we let you know this last time we spoke with you. No, you never, nobody ever mentioned, including today's communication with April, that the restriction on screen sharing. Um, I, I guess, you know, Mr. Gold, we have the pictures of your yard. Um, and, wait, wait, wait. And, uh, let's not change the subject, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gold, we've presented the pictures of your yard in its current state. Uh, okay. Uh, would you be providing pictures that would show us that you've taken care of the, the lawn? I will show you what I wanted to show. Okay. Uh, as we let you know, you would have needed to submit that prior. Um, we can't allow you to share your screen in a public meeting like this. Um, what? Well, what? because there's been many instances of that not going well. Um, okay, well, so please put it in big red black letters, prohibited. Yep. 
Mr. Goal, um, I, I don't know how that would be relevant to this meeting or the last. It's okay. You okay. missed the opportunity for me to prove it to you. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. We have we have current evidence that your lawn is way overgrown. Okay. We've, we have gone through this for the last ten plus okay. years. Okay. Please, you. please stop historic things. I want to change that vision of history from today. Well, Mr. Co okay, let me continue and please do not interrupt me. We may limit your time, Mr. Gold, but please do go ahead and present what you would like. Okay, so as the city code goes, citizens of Bloomington, including me, allowed to have non mode native lawns if they are not overgrown and do not contain weeds, grass, and other terms that are determined in city uh, code. Every plant that I have was very carefully screened. I, especially last nine months, I had visitors, two retired um, professors of botany that showed me that I have fantastic local non-invasive, uh, non-hurtful to human health plants. I have blessings of having in our town people like Deep Roots um, uh, store near east um, side of uh, Blooming Foods where uh, Ramsey and Tory answered dozens of my questions, only those that were screened by them. I have help from Amy Thompson of Purdue Extension that answered tons of my photographs, so that's good, that's not good, and whatever it is. Every of my plans, to the best of my knowledge, is non-invasive. And if one cares to read carefully the ordinance, only certain bad things are not allowed to be above eight inches. Native things are allowed. Like for example, and I did send last report um, of a leader in fighting non-invasive great botanist and enthusiast of protection um, uh, environment here, <coughs> Ellen Jacob. <coughs> they all confirm that I do not have invasive noxious plants. In fact, there is a rumor in the population that ragweed is bad. Ragweed is not present on any state, federal, or uh, um, local uh, list of bad things, yet. When I discovered that, I know there are people who are sensitive to those things, okay? I personally removed every one of them. This year, there were only six smallish ragweeds, and that's what I need help. I tried to ask hand, please, guys, come over, show me where the plants that you do not like that you can see the bad ones are let's create the map and i will look through all these things i want to resolve the problem and uh, i do not want these beautiful plants of mine to be destroyed in a company of maybe one uh, 10 inch uh, stick of grass I do not want my property that is full of legitimate plants to be destroyed. I don't want this endless fight. I don't want to go to court. Okay. Show me where the bad plants are. I will remove them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gull, for your comments. I'll turn it over to the board for questions. Questions from the board on this item? I had no questions. Okay. 
I will. Make, uh, yeah. I don't see any other uh, questions from the board. I will just kind of, uh, <clears throat> uh, as much as Mr. Gold uh, asked me not to provide history here, um, this is an ongoing and historical issue with Mr. Gold and his property. It's been going on. I think Mr. Wheeler would confirm for over a decade. This has been uh, taken to the courts. This uh, has been appealed to the courts. This has been a situation where uh, the city has been shown to be in the right year after year um, to the point that we have um, won the court cases to say that this lawn is not in compliance with our local code. Go and inform exactly how to get his yard certified as a natural habitat. Um, and, and that's never occurred. Um, what we have is a nuisance property in the terms of an overgrown lawn <clears throat> uh, that has been repeatedly, repeatedly upheld as uh, being overgrown to the standards of city code and has needed abatement for each of the last at least four to five years. Um, with that, I'd offer no other comment from the board or from the public works office. I don't know if Hand or Mr. Wheeler would like to raise their hand and offer any comment, but I do want that perspective to be known. Mr. Wheeler, I will un uh, I, th I think it's important when you look at the height of the grass, there is a photograph, I, I hope, in your packet that shows the uh, measuring tape uh, set to show what eight inches is and shows yes. how tall. Um, yes, I believe uh, it shows that it's around Yes, 30. I have that. It's almost waist high. Yep. And, uh, and what, I, what I'm curious, though, is, Mr. Mosier, when you're at the property and you're looking from the sidewalk there at the property and, and getting these photographs and taking that measurement, do you see regular grass standing in, intermingled throughout the property at greater than eight inches? They should be unmuted. And yet they're not. There we go. Uh, Norm, did, did you hear Chris's question? Yes, sir. Um, there is grass in there mixed amongst the weeds that is eight inches or higher. Right. And, and so, thank you, Norm. So uh, I, I'm going to agree with Mr. Gull on a great many things that he says. He does have a lot of plants that are located in the property that are acceptable and they look like weeds, but they're acceptable. Uh, plantains and milkweed, uh, things like that, that certainly are allowed to be grown in excess of eight inches and aren't considered to be uh, the type of plant that gets overgrown and creates a public health situation. Those types of things would not cause uh, a violation. The problem becomes the fact that throughout the property, uh, and grass is just one example, uh, throughout the property there's grass, which is not harmful to anybody, but the grass is allowed to grow up throughout all of the other acceptable plants at a height of greater than eight inches. And that becomes the problem. The intermingling of all of the plants together uh, makes it virtually impossible to maintain that effort to gain a natural habitat that also remains in compliance with our code. And that is why we keep having to come back and ask for abatement. Uh, I, I suspect Mr. Gull's getting closer. I haven't been out there this year, so I don't know. But, uh, it's still in violation. There's still grass over eight inches, and uh, there's going to be some collateral damage, if you pardon the language. But uh, uh, if we have to go out and abate, he will lose some of his uh, acceptable plants in order to bring the unacceptable plants down to the proper height. Uh, and again, uh, staff would ask that the abatement be approved. Thank you. Uh, I think we uh, opened it for board questions, um, and I don't believe we have any additional questions. Are there any additional questions from the board? All right. No. Uh, is is there? Um, Would you like to turn it back to Mr. Gold for comment? Hello. If yeah, if if there is, we've got one additional minute for comment. Okay, so uh, I, as I said, we are talking about things today and now. All these examples of history are irrelevant. But what's relevant 
when the hired by city contractors bring their heavy equipment and destroy milkweed population. I had six dozens of plants. And this is the main environment to sustain very important population. But when these hack men come over, they don't care. Oh, who cares about uh, the butterflies? Who cares about the birds? Who cares about sustainability? That's good uh, slogans for the populace in the press. Good political slogans. In reality, nobody cares. My golden rods, my uh, iron weeds, my flea banes, fantastic. Yes, and I do have thistles, not prohibited Canada thistles, but bull thistles. And I wish city invested more in, um, in education, education of the inspectors. I've noticed certain things started happening around city. So the other day, after farmer's market. Thank I you, Mr. Gold. Went, we, hold we, on. Mr. Gold, we're, we're wrapping up with the time on your comments. You gave Mr. King all the time he wanted to repeat many times. I'm giving some praise to the enlightenment happening in Bloomington, the plants in front of a uh, showers building. I was amazed the same appearance as my flea banes. Good thinking. In a Parking manicured way. In a manicured way, according to certified wildlife habitats. That's what we have offered you for years is to help you do that. And that's no, where your unwillingness has always that's led That's not to true. In the that very beginning, when uh, Doris Sims was deputy and I bought membership in wildlife uh, habitat organization and put the sign, she said, I don't care. That's it what... Was, it, it did not meet the, the spirit of the code, Mr. Goal, and that's why we're back here again today. So you contradict yourself. You tell me you advise me to be uh, pro-environmental? <clears throat> no, Mr. Okay. Gold, I'm saying that your lawn is very much out of compliance this year as well as the years past. Again, as show Mr. me, show me those I will, with my hands, I do work practically every day, pulling out all these negative elements in my environment. Show me. Okay, I'm closing um, comment at this time. Uh, were there any other remaining public comments from other members of the public? Yes, we've got Mr. J. I'm going to unmute you, J. Uh, I, there you go. Hi. Uh, just a quick comment. I mean, this has been going on for years as a, as a neighbor. Um, this has been extremely upsetting to myself and numerous other people. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, is this property has been out of compliance. Um, there have been numerous opportunities to bring it to compliance. It has not happened. And I appreciate the board taking the action to abate the property. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have other members of the public waiting to make a comment? I don't see any in the chat box. I don't see anyone raising a hand. No. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion from the board? I move approval of the provision to abate the property at 2611 East Round Hill Lane. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right. I'll be right back on our next item. I just have to get back in my package. <laughs> I know I'm up, I'm up next. Okay. Uh, next up is consent agenda. Uh, under the consent agenda is the approval of minutes for June 23rd of 2020 and approval of the payroll register. Are there any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda this evening? Seeing none. Uh, are there any public comments on the items within the consent agenda? Uh, 
I am not seeing any. I don't see any either. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up is new business. First, it is approved preliminary engineering contract with American Structure Point Inc. for the Discovery Parkway project. All right, let me try to figure this out. I'm sorry, Kyla, do you have, which staff member is this? Is it Neil? That's Neil. I'm unmute Neil and I'm gonna unmute Sarah. <laughs> All right, we got Neil. I uh, I don't see Neil on here, he was, uh, but I believe this is his. He was just on. I know he's dealt with some internet issues lately. I'm guessing he's going to try to get back in. Hang on, Kyla. I can probably wing this through the. Um, yeah, he he offered us a report during the work session, so he may um, mm -hmm. come back in here in a All second. Right. We'll just put his written, written staff report into the minutes of the meeting if he can't jump back on right away. Um, and then, um, does the board have any additional questions from the work session yesterday? I do not. No. All right, is there any um, public comment on this particular item? I don't see any in the comments. Anyone like to raise their hand for any public comment? I don't see any there. All right, is there a motion from the board on this item? I'll I move that we approve for of the preliminary engineering contract with American Structure Point Inc. for the Discovery Parkway project. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next up is approved temporary right of way request for from WDG Construction Group for 910 and 916 North College Avenue from railroad overpass to West 14th Street from July 8th, 2020 through July 21st, 2020. Uh, all right, I think Neil just jumped back in, but I believe we're going to Sarah Gomez for this and I should have Unmuted Sarah, I'm unmuting Sarah. Sarah, are you doing this one for Paul? Um, I guess so, I don't see him on here, so. I don't either. Um, yeah, I, I apologize, I do not have that staff report pulled up, but I, I think I can go through it pretty easily. Um, so W uh, D G, G uh, Construction Company is requesting to use the right of way at the co-lib project between um, the railroad tracks and 14th Street um, at College and um, Walnut Street. Uh, they are also requesting to use the alley uh, so they can rebuild it and also use it as their um, entrance and exit for their construction entrance. Um, the sidewalk would be closed from July 8th until July 21st, and a walk around would be in place as shown on the maintenance of traffic plan. Um, then the alley would be closed from July 8th until August 30th, I believe, um, <clears throat> to be uh, used and rebuilt. So, um, I believe that Chris Deckert is here to answer yep. any questions. Yes, I've unmuted Chris. I'll just add, um, I know there was a lot of discussion about this project yesterday at the work session and, and the um, stop work order that's been placed on that. I do know planning staff has been closely trying to work with the property owners and the construction company to get the property into compliance overall so that work can begin again. Um, this does require uh, a walk around. Um, I, um, correct, Sarah? Yes, yeah, so uh, the sidewalk will be closed uh, the entirety of the sidewalk replacement. And there will be a walk around in place though, correct? Yes, there will be a, there will be a walk around required for that and it'll be in place. There's yep. plenty of room in this particular space to put a walk around. Great, thank you, Sarah. Uh, I guess, Kyla, I guess if you want, um, 
if Mr. Deckert has any comment, we'd uh, allow that now, and otherwise we could go to board questions. Mr. Deckert, did you have any comments? We can just ask questions. Are, th are there any questions from the board on this item? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that uh, the walk around, which uh, extends into the street, will be lighted at night and there'll be signage up to uh, warn people ahead of time that that's a, a closed area and that there's a walk around. All right, we do have Paul here now. Paul, did you hear that question? Yes, I did. Yeah, and five, that's- Five feet off the curb. Yes, yeah, it's, it's into the street. And then what they've told me is that it will be lit at night. Okay, which thank is you. We are calling it. Yeah, yep. thank you. Other questions from the board? We, we did discuss um, the fact that there will be continued traffic uh, access to that lane as well as the walk around um, in that space. Uh, so there's not a lane restriction, um, but we in the work session talked about the um, plan to also include some warning signage uh, in the area just uh, to alert motorists um, of the construction that's happening there uh, to ensure that vehicles are um, safely passing through that area with the walk around in place. Right. Anything else, uh, questions from the board on this particular item? No. Uh, any public comment on this item? I do not it see. It looks like Chris did put something in the chat. Yep. Uh, so Mr. Decker did say that traffic flow will not be disrupted and warning signs would be installed uh, per the maintenance of traffic plan. Great. Uh, so hearing no public comment, is there a motion from the board? I move approval of temporary right of way request from WDG Construction Group for 910 and 916 North College Avenue from railroad overpass to West 14th Street from July 8th, 2020 to July 21st, 2020. So uh, is July 21st the correct date or was it August 30th? No, this is for the there. sidewalk only. Okay. So the yeah. walk will, will continue until then, but, but this, the right of way request only goes to January or July 21st. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the alley is a different one, and that's through uh, yeah, August 20th. Yeah, and I think, I think though, the alley is part of there. this. We probably need to frame our, um, our motion to include that last date, which is August 30th. Uh, yeah, August. August 30th or August 20th? Uh, August 30th. So I, I, I 30th. Okay. Uh, so Beth, if you could make a motion that uh, you'll approve the temporary use of right of way for sidewalk work to be completed by July 21st and alley work to be completed mm -hmm. by August 30th, um, okay. that that would be the proper motion. Okay. So my original motion plus the alley work to be completed by August 30th. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. A nice second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Great. Thank you all. Thanks. Next, we have approved change order number seven for the West 17th Street reconstruction project. All right. I've got Matt Smethurst here. I've got Matt unmuted. Wait, unmute. There you go, Matt. Uh, good evening. Matt Smethurst with Land and Transportation. Uh, the first item on the change order is for the additional rent for the field office, which was necessary after the contraction, contract completion date was extended into June of this year. Uh, the second item is for the removal of two trees. It was determined these trees needed to be removed after additional grading was done in this area. The total for the change order is $13,540.75. The Redevelopment Commission approved the change order at their meeting last evening. Uh, staff has reviewed the change order and would recommend your approval. 
Matt, will we be expecting another uh, trailer rental change order for July? No, uh, we switched inspectors on the project a few months ago and the new inspector decided they did not need a trailer anymore to complete the work. Great. So this will be all. Thank you. Questions from the board on this item? I don't. Any public comment on this item? I don't see any in the chat box. I don't see anyone raising their hand to offer public comment. Thank you. Is there a motion from the board? I move approval of change order number seven for the West 17th Street construction project. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next up is approve escrow agreement between City of Bloomington and Ken Blackwell for Summit Ridge maintenance project. All right, trying to get Sarah Gomez unmuted and Mike Rooker unmuted. And we'll get, I think I just lost Mr. Blackwell. Oh, there he is. And Mr. Blackwell's unmuted as well. So uh, Sarah Gomez. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me now? Okay, thanks. Um, the, the Kenny Blackwell and City Legal um, request the approval of an escrow account agreement between the city and Kenny for Summit Ridge um, maintenance bond period. An escrow agreement was developed by legal staff, the bank, and Kenny Blackwell, and the amount of $50,000 to cover the cost of issues that may arise in regards to the recent 13 curb ramps and 76 street trees planted at the Summit Ridge development. The recent work at Summit Ridge is an effort to complete items required by the city at the time of the development project, um, which was from 2007. So the city may accept the public improvements associated with the development. <clears throat> the escrow agreement will take place of the maintenance bond that would be in place at the time of acceptance of the public improvements. And once the agreement is approved by the board, Kenny Blackwell has seven days to um, fund the escrow account. Um, this agreement was, um, more so initiated by planning and transportation and we've worked with legal staff and the petitioner um, to come to an alternate agreement um, in lieu of the maintenance bond and recommend approval of the escrow agreement. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, questions from the board on this item. What happens if the um uh, escrow account is not funded within seven days, then what happens? Um, at that time, the agreement would be null and Mr. Blackhole would be in violation of um, his requirement to have a bond for the development. And I don't know if Mr. Uh, Rooker would have anything else to say about that. Yeah, sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself. Yeah, that would result in a violation of Title 20, so a notice of violation would be sent and there would be fines associated with that. Okay. And then when will this project be completed? It sounds like it's been going on for years. Um, Is there a time, time frame? Mr. Blackwell has finally uh, completed all the, the items that we had um, requested him to follow up with um, over the last about year and year and a half. And so the, the construction is now complete and this is just to um, get him to the point where we can get those public improvements accepted by the, by the city. Okay, thank you. So yeah, um, Ms. Hallett-Beth, we'd be looking to work uh, with Mr. Blackwell over the next several months to finalize any outstanding details with the project and get the 
street inventory accepted into the city street inventory, begin offering sanitation services and those sorts of things. Okay, so it will come back to us when that's all done. Yes, it will. Okay, all right, thank you. Other questions from the board at this time? Are there any public comments on this item? I don't see any. Uh, Mr. Blackwell, do you have any comments? I don't see any there either. Okay. All right, hearing none, is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve escrow agreement between City of Bloomington and Kenny Blackwell for Summit Ridge maintenance period. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next up, we have staff reports and other business. I uh, just wanted to bring the board up to speed on a couple of things. Um, finalizing um, uh, contract extension with Hoosier Disposal on our landfill and recycling rates. Uh, we'll get a, a several year extension with that. We'll be looking at a, a 3% CPI increase depending on where um, CPI ends up. Um, and so finalizing that with Hoosier Disposal. Um, we'll be continuing our recycling rate into the future, which is a very, very good thing. Um, and, uh, so we do have that on our plate right now, working through that. Um, and then, uh, just wanted to touch base on a couple other things. We've got, you know, lots of summer construction projects, uh, continuing our paving crews out <clears throat> doing great work in this heat. Uh, so, uh, just want to remind motorists of, you know, just safety and work zones, um, <clears throat> as always being a priority, uh, reminding folks that the new, um, July 1st, the new state laws went into place with, uh, hands-free driving, um, <clears throat> and just a reminder for that. Uh, otherwise, want to say thank you, um, uh, and like to do this each and every meeting. Um, you know, we've got staff out um, working in uh, you know really tough circumstances right now. If it's not 95 to 100 degrees, you know, we've got the we've, uh, you know the, the the COVID situation continuing, and um, you know, staffs uh, staff and public works. I just want to express my thanks. Um, my gratitude, uh, um, you know, I'm very proud of the work that we do in public works on a daily basis. Um, and I'm very proud of the staff that we get to work with. So uh, thanks to all of them. Um, and then just, you know, a note of grace and patience to, to everybody right now. Um, <clears throat> Kyle, I very much appreciated your comments at the beginning of the meeting. Um, you know, we, we stand for all, um, we're, here for, we're here for all members of, uh, of Bloomington. Um, and uh, uh, all residents, all visitors, and um, just, uh, you know, uh, everybody taking a deep breath, uh, grace, patience, and um, recognizing we're all in this together. So I uh, appreciate everybody's efforts and uh, appreciate the board and their efforts this evening. I know it was a bit clunky there, but we, we got through it. Um, uh, I need to remember uh, how, how Kyla runs the board meetings and runs them entirely, and I run the work sessions. Uh, but uh, try my, you know, uh, so it got a little clunky tonight, but appreciate everybody uh, uh, getting through that with us. I appreciate the comments of Mr. King earlier. Uh, Mr. Goal, um, you know, uh, those, those conversations are sometimes difficult, but they're necessary, and uh, appreciate having those in a, in a public setting, even if it's via Zoom and, uh, and that. So uh, thanks to all. Thank you, Adam. We appreciate you and Thank all you. the public works staff and planning and transportation staff and uh, hand staff who uh, make this meeting a part of their evenings uh, and noon hours when we have our work sessions. And uh, I know this time uh, has been challenging for everybody and so appreciate the extra effort um, that everybody is going to uh, at, this, at this time. Thanks. Here, here. Uh, Next, we have approval of claims. Were there any questions from the board on claims? Um, I'll just mention, I did go through some of them with Beth yesterday to answer some questions on some of the animal shelter purchases on, um, I think it's even page one of the claims, just uh, on some of the mm -hmm. higher amounts there. Uh, I talked to Beth about how those are just very based on, quant those higher amounts are based on large quantity tests and thing, uh, large quantity purchases for, uh, for several of those items at the animal shelter. 
um, and uh, appreciated those questions. Um, happy to answer any other questions on any of the claims. Uh, the only question I had is the the actual final page of claims, the mm -hmm. total amount. It looks like it's the wrong final uh -oh. page. Like it looks like because it says board safety board on it, um, and it only has one hundred five thousand dollars, which. I'm not really great at math, but it didn't seem like that, that all added up. <laughs> 534,000 does not. Uh... <laughs> oh, um, okay. Sorry so, that I didn't catch that until no, earlier. I don't think we did either. Um, the register of claims that was sent by the controller's office is for the Board of Public Works. So, um, and that's just the final document you all sign. Um, right. We'll get that updated with the with the total amount of five hundred and thirty four thousand five hundred ninety eight and twenty one cents. Uh, so we'll get that document for signature corrected first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, do we need to approve that? Yeah, we we yeah. would want to approve yeah. it that bottom line that's on the uh, page thirty two of thirty two, not the register sheet right. we were given. Okay, cool. So I'll approve the register of claims um, in the amount of five hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred ninety-eight dollars and twenty-one cents. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And if there is no other um, business, then I will call for adjournment.